Uh, can you tell us your name and the title of your book? Hi, my name is Eric David Jeremiah O'Brien, Eric D.J. O'Brien. I've written a series called The Dwyer and Eaton Staff Saga, and this is my third book, The Last Admiral, which we'll be talking about extensively today. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So I'm going to move into the questions about your book. So how many books have you written? I've written four books, a uh, four-part series uh, entitled The Dwyer and Eaton Staff Saga. Uh, it starts with Kerr's Rage, part one, which leads into part two, The Drums of Doom. And part three, The Last Admiral, is a prequel. And part four is The Ice Moon, the conclusion of the saga. Those are the first four of the books that I've written so far. And out of the first, the four of your books that you've written, which one is your favorite? Um, I love them all, but I, I think my favorite is The Last Admiral. Uh, for a variety of reasons, but I, yeah, I would choose The Last Admiral as my favorite of the series. Thank you, Eric. And what is the significance of the title The Last Admiral? Um, the Last Admiral tells the tale of uh, an admiral, a naval ship commander named Admiral Aklan Lucharon, and uh, he leads an 11th fleet of Dragonia. Dragonia is a, a totalitarian empire, and uh, basically he's been, he's been uh, set up by his despotic queen, Aphra, to go on a suicide mission. And this, the book tells the tale of his faithful last mission, his last sail of the 11th fleet. And it tells, uh, tells the story of his faithful end. And that's why it's entitled The Last Admiral because Aklan is the last admiral of the 11th fleet of Dragonia. So that's the secret. Thank you, Eric. And can you share with us a snippet that isn't in the blurb? Uh, sure. I, um, at the end of the book is a 180 page naval battle. And um, there's some really exciting uh, battle scenes. Uh, and this is this is from uh, quite an epic struggle between uh, an Asian style martial arts expert and imagine imagine a Kung Fu warrior facing off against an ancient Celtic fighter, a swords master in battle. So we have these two very different styles of fighting and they're, they're engaged in a heated one-on-one -on -one combat while their men look on. This is a segment of that. Um, slash, spin, lunge, parry, and break away. Each fighter was then the equal of his foe. With lungs laboring through the wretched smoke of smoldering planks, burning oil and incinerated flesh. They cut and hewed in sad futility that filled the hearts of every witness with both awe and horror. Here, surely, two mighty heroes did battle in the loss of one, no less than the ruin of 1,000. The movements of their blades were imperceptible, for truly, they appeared then to be unarmed as each man's arms spun in a cascading whirlwind. The vicious sounds of their clash of arms rose ever higher as they drove their bodies to their limits. It was a duel between masters, and as such, it would only end through desperate action. Thank you. That's beautiful. Now, does one of the main characters hold a special place in your heart? If so, why? Um, I think my well, Aquan and his son Vlad are quite similar. They're father and son. Um, the have very individual, they're strong individuals. They have very firm moral principles, a code of honor, and uh, they're, they're really warriors for good. Um, they stand on their principle, even if it means that they could die. So, and they, and they have special talents. They have uh, mental powers, ASP. They can move matter with their minds. So they have powers that the rest of us don't have. And they're also, uh, wizards as well, and warriors. So those are my two favorite characters in the book, Aquan the Admiral and his son, Vlad. So because they're basically, they're me in the flesh if I had those powers myself. And that's what I would like to be like them if I, if I could. So <laughs> yeah, they're my favorites. 
Oh, I like that. Well, I'm, I'm sure at some point you are actually them because that's how it got the inspiration right. Now, do you have a favorite character that you have written? If so, who? And what makes them so special? Uh, I think my favorite character overall in my saga is a dwarf called Kirk Hegporter. And he is the, oh, I'm sorry. He's the star of Kerr's Rage. Basically, the book Kerr's Rage kind of revolves around Kerr and his uh, his friends. And Kerr Kegporter is a sort of a kind-hearted warrior. He's a soldier, um, but he knows the, the price of battle. Um, he deeply feels remorse for the enemies he's killed and for his fallen comrades. So he kind of, uh, he's a real-world soldier, uh, sort of with uh, PTSD, if you will, um, but he really is a kind-hearted guy that wishes for peace, but he's also uh, quite the warrior himself. So Kerr is, I think, my favorite character of all in the series. So okay. he's the star of Pipe One. <laughs> well, gotta look out for Kerr. And then um, what was the inspiration for the story, The Last Admiral? Um, I was inspired, well, The Last Admiral Originally, it was just going to be uh, some beginning chapters at, at, for the Ice Moon. I was going to make it much more brief. But then once I got into the project, I realized that I wanted to do a much more detailed story, and it became a novel of its own. Um, the books have, in, have been inspired mainly um, by my Army experiences. Um, our world, I try to echo the mirror our world's politics and the wars that are going on in my stories. So I try to set my books in time so that they echo in a parallel way our own world. So The Last Admiral, uh, it's sort of you know, one man standing up for goodness in the hopes that you know, he can overthrow the, the evil powers that be and create a better world. So you know, that's the inspiration behind it. And it was at the time uh, that I was first conceptualizing the story was Desert Storm, Saddam Hussein and the United States involvement in the Middle East. Um, so those um, conflicting powers and, you know, the vying struggle is what inspired me to create the story itself. But also I have uh, influences from history, uh, Rome, uh, Germany at World War II. Uh, they sort of form, uh, Dragonia is my evil empire. It's sort of a blend of Nazi Germany and uh, ancient Rome. And if you can imagine the, the good side is like a feudal alliance of monarchies. It's better, it's not perfect either, but those are the two main powers that are clashing in my book. Okay. And what was the highlight of writing this book? I would say the highlight is the final uh, naval battle. And I wrote a huge, very long naval battle. And uh, in order to keep make it so the readers could follow it along, um, I used uh, Hollywood actors from the past to fill the roles of my naval commanders because there was so many characters, but also the Battle of Trafalgar from October 21st, 1805 was a huge influence on the naval battle at the end. Uh, that battle was uh, Admiral Nelson and uh, his English the British fleet against the French and Spanish combined fleets. And so I took uh, admirals from history and brought them back to life in my book exactly as they were described in history and brought them back to life, put them at the helm, if you will. And uh, it really came out. To, I was very satisfied with it at the end. Yeah. That's I, I have actors, I have, uh, you know, actors like John Wayne. Of course, you can't use John Wayne's real name, but his real name was Marion Mitchell Morris. So in the book, he's Marion Wayne. But I describe him exactly as he was in life. I try to create his dialogue as we saw him in the movies. Um, and Burt Lancaster, who's uh, also a great actor from that same period. Kirk Douglas is here in the book in the form of Izzy Douglas, which is Douglas's family nickname for Kirk Douglas was Izzy. So in the book, he's Izzy Douglas. So I have many heroes like that. Bruce Lee, David Carradine, uh, a lot of actors from Hollywood from the past. Uh, that we love are in the book again, alive again. <laughs> That's good. And um, can you tell us about your first published book and what was the journey like? Uh, Curse Rage was my first published book. 
I showed it once before. Um, it was it was uh, challenging. Of course, it was my first book. I was developing as a writer. Uh, it, sometimes I had to take a lot of constructive criticism or negative criticism to improve upon it. That's the result of numerous uh, rewrites and revisions. It took about 10 years to put it in the form that it is now. Um, so it, it was rewarding, but it was also sometimes frustrating as I was learning and trying to develop my voice and my craft. I mean, yeah. everything takes time, right? And patience. Right. So, so which of your books were the most enjoyable to write? Oh, I loved writing them all. Uh, the Drums of Doom. I sort of wrote it during a challenging period, but actually uh, part two, I mean, it sounds funny. I wrote most of that book in the laundromat while I was waiting for my laundry. The, the sound of the dryers would put me in the zone, so to speak. And uh, my inspiration would pour out of me in that environment. Um, that was a difficult time in my life, but I loved the drums of doom. By then the story was really coming to life in my mind. Um, I'm a fan of Dungeons and Dragons and um, the book is in some ways related to adventures that I ran as a dungeon master in Dungeons and Dragons and my fellow players, my friends helped me develop the story mm -hmm. and they listened to my, my segments my, uh, and they gave me feedback and it really helped me improve my writing over time. I owe a lot to them. Yeah. Well, we, we all welcome feedback, right? What inspired you to start writing? Um, it wasn't really a what, but it was a who. Uh, in college, I had a wonderful girlfriend named Nancy. Um, she was an English major, a brilliant woman, uh, very well read, and I was a science major. And um, she used to read some of the stuff that I wrote for my other courses. And I had kept a journal, uh, sort of like a diary of my own. And she would sometimes read from it and she would comment that, you know, hey, you're in the wrong major. You shouldn't be a science major, you should be a writer. Uh, you know, at the time I was, you know, I, was, I didn't know what my path was going to be. I was uncertain. Uh, and, but it kind of stuck in my mind that she said that to me. I never forgot it. And then in the army, I had a fellow ranger who would read stuff that I wrote in the field. Uh, you know, in the army, there's a lot of downtime, boring times where there isn't much to do. And I would illustrate, I would write stories. And my friend read, read some of my stuff. And he said, you know, you're a really good writer. Why don't you write books? And uh, those two people uh, had a lot to do with me developing and becoming a writer. Because, you know, really when I was young, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to be. Uh, I wasn't thinking about being a writer from youth, although I, you know, I always dreamed about maybe writing fantasy and science fiction because I always loved those genres and the authors that I read as a, as a kid. So... Yeah. Did I know I was going to be a writer then? No, probably not until I was in my 20s. Did I really consider giving it, you know, a serious uh, consideration? Well, I'm glad you did. Right now you have four books. Now, um, Eric, how long have you been writing? Like I said, I started writing um, during Desert Storm, uh, probably from 1991 on as a hobby. And uh, I didn't really start writing Curse Rage, the novel until I was out of the service in 1994. So about 30 years, I guess. Yeah. And so you mentioned that you started writing in 1991, right? Right around there, yeah. Uh, right around that time. And yeah. have you always wanted to be a writer? I wouldn't say so. I always enjoyed writing. To me, it was never a chore. Um, I enjoyed writing, but I, I never considered doing it professionally until later on, you know, once I started working on Curtis Rage, then it was in my mind. It was a dream uh, to maybe one day support myself through writing, sure. And now look at you, right? Uh, dreams come true. <laughs> keep trying, right? Yeah, keep yeah. trying. <laughs> and you know, it, what, what you did is important thing because now you're getting your stories across and giving something more valuable to readers to appreciate. Oh. How do you handle literary criticism? I'm going to handle constructive criticism well. Uh, negative criticism, it might hurt my feelings. I try to learn from it. Uh, and I always try to improve my craft. If somebody gives me negative feedback, I try to look inward, you know, see if I believe 
what he said was true. And if it was, I try to improve upon my writing, use it to get stronger instead of to quit. Yeah. So I'd say I, I, that's how I try to handle it. I wouldn't say that really negative feedback doesn't hurt my feelings though. But yeah, because yeah. you work hard on what you do. Yeah. Well, you're not alone. You know, it hurts my feelings too when I get uh, criticism. I think it's 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 a normal human being feeling, right? Yes. Uh, but what you do with that feedback is important. So I'm glad you take it really well um, and you're able to improve your craft based on the feedback that you receive. Now, um, what advice would you give a new writer, uh, someone just starting out? Um, I would say uh, do the work. Don't try to cut corners. Um, get a uh, writer's handbook, uh, like Macmillan College uh, handbook, anything to improve your craft to learn the rules of English. Uh, just don't try to jump right in without doing the work. I, I have a lot of people, uh, I think, make that mistake. They don't want to put in the extra effort to really grasp the nitty gritty. Uh, but also, uh, in terms of writing, you also, you, if, you, if you love writing, if you do it even for no profit, I say write. If your only goal is to make money and to succeed, I think you're likely to be disappointed because uh, there's so many great writers out there. It's in a giant endless sea of writers and in order to become wit uh, noticed by the traditional publishing industry or the people that are really gonna pay you, it's gonna take a lot of work and luck. And you gotta be really good and really lucky, I think, uh, to, to make it, to make money, right? Uh, if you're not worried about the money, if you love writing, love entertaining people and creating something beautiful, I say write hard, keep going. Yeah. I think that's some great advice. Um, where can readers purchase your books? Um, they can purchase my books from online booksellers. Uh, Amazon has a Kindle format ebook as well as the paperback, bondsandnoble.com. Uh, they can go to my website, www.ericdjobrien.com for links to all my books. And uh, any online seller, retailer should have my books for sale at this point. Okay, thank you. And where can readers find out more about you and your books? Um, I have Facebook pages, uh, Dwar Heem Staff Saga on Facebook. Also, my personal page, Eric David Jeremiah O'Brien. And also I have a YouTube channel where I've narrated some of my stories. Uh, again, Eric DJ O'Brien on YouTube. Uh, you can learn more about me. And you can also email me at curzrage at gmail.com. I'll be happy to answer anybody's uh, letter. So okay. K-U-R-S-R-A-G-E at gmail.com. <laughs> well, thank you, Eric. Now, Eric, how's your experience working with Bookmark Alliance? Uh, Bookmark Alliance has been uh, consummate professionals uh, so far I've been very enthusiastic about my work which I really love about the bookmark alliance um, they're very prompt in fulfilling their promises uh, I've had, worked with other companies where they you know, take your money and they sort of don't show up for a long time <laughs> and I haven't had that problem with bookmark alliance they're, they're prompt uh, courteous service very friendly people and so far it's been a great experience well, thank you, Eric, for sharing um, your experience with Bookmark Alliance. Of course, uh, we want to be your partner of choice, and we want to continue to provide the best service as possible. Um, now, lastly, can you share your final message to the your readers and uh, mention your book again? Sure. Um, as a final message, I would say I think there's magic in all Every book, I think there's a lot of magic in my books, uh, a lot of entertainment, but you have to buy it and open, turn the page and read it to, to get the magic, to, to feel it. I want people to feel what I'm trying to, to show them. I want you to have a great experience, feel excitement during the battle scenes, uh, feel the passion of the characters, you know, and really experience a, a tremendous thrill ride. That's my final message. I, I wrote the book to entertain. There's no bold, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be a genius or trying to be, but I am trying to be clever and surprising and fun. Um, I would say it's not necessarily a children's novel, 
Um, there's a lot of violence in my books, but there's no explicit material. There's no bad language. Um, I think you know any uh, well-balanced uh, kid, uh, teenage years and up, should be fine reading my books. So that's my final message. I hope everyone gets a chance to read the Dwyer and Heem Staff Saga and The Last Admiral, part three of the Dwyer and Heem Staff Saga. Well, thank you, Eric. Uh, 